Mild to medium failure includes vibration from below at certain speeds on the highway, and it feels like a resonance. Total failure. Violent hammering when rapidly accelerating from a stop, squeaking when driving at 35 to 45 miles per hour, it sounds like a differential is blown, and it feels like something is hitting the Cayenne from below. It's this part, on the drive shaft in the middle of the vehicle. The drive shaft spins and needs to be supported. To directly quote the parts company who makes upgraded replacement parts for this issue, JXB, the first gen Cayenne has a nearly 100% rate of center bearing support failure from the factory. Their extensive research into the root cause of the failures shows the issue lies in a 5 degree misalignment between the transfer case and the front half of the drive shaft. Since the attachment of the drive shaft to the transfer case is a rubber guibo, which cannot articulate without imparting forces into the drive shaft, it is unable to deal with this misalignment without causing the drive shaft to vibrate. This vibration quickly wears out the OEM center support rubber. The solution is a center support bearing carrier that is strong enough to resist constant drive shaft vibration, yet soft enough to absorb it without transmitting it into the cabin. The two-piece design clamps around the original bearing and does not require disassembly of the drive shaft or special tools. In today's video, we've shared the sound clips, showed on the parts diagram where the issue is, and have established that it's a common issue on Cayennes, even on the V6 as it turns out. We'll share the step-by-step -step instructions on how to upgrade your carrier support bearing to JXB's. We assume you bought the JXB tunnel brace because it makes installation a breeze and makes it so that you don't need to lower your drive shaft. If you didn't buy the JXB tunnel brace, then the instructions will be a little different and you'll need to supplement this video with the JXB one to complete the installation. I recommend inspecting your support and replacing it sooner rather than later because mine completely failed at 136,000 miles during a road trip. It was not fun. It's more or less towards the back of the vehicle where we'll be getting under and doing the work. So filming from here to here. Remove the two bolts holding the old support in place using a 13 millimeter socket. Then remove the six bolts holding the tunnel brace in place using a 16 millimeter socket. Cut away old support. If your old support bearing carrier is not obliterated like mine was, then the rubber on the drive shaft bearing will be attached to the outer carrier. Mine was obliterated, so I don't have much to show here. This is when I would put a razor blade and cut around the rubber to have the two pieces disconnected like I already have here. Cut away most of the rubber, but leave the thin base layer intact on the drive shaft bearing. Do not cut to the bare metal. Check the existing bearing. We're about to put a new bearing support on, but before we support the old bearing, we have to check that the old bearing is still good. It most likely is, and per the OEM procedure, replacing the entire bearing is completely unnecessary. But just in case, spin the old bearing and check for binding. Check that it doesn't make horrible sounds. Check that it doesn't make squeaking sounds. It should be fine. If it does make noise or behave like a bearing should not, you might want to pause here and consider taking the drive shaft apart and replacing the bearing because you need to if the bearing is bad. Assuming everything is most likely fine, which it should be, we're moving on. Unfortunately, the next step requires cutting, but on the bright side, what we're about to cut is getting replaced with something much better. I like my Dremel because it's my tool of choice for attacking rusted car bolts, especially on exhaust, and now apparently carrier bearing supports. I recommend these metal cutting discs. They're a bit expensive, but worth it. We make two cuts into the old carrier bearing support and cut the rubber if we need to with a razor. Assuming you have the JXB tunnel brace, Let's install the bottom half of the carrier onto the tunnel brace. You get a kit with two washers with the JXB tunnel brace that we'll use. First, we grab the bolt and slide the smallest washer on. Once on, we grab the large washer included with the JXB tunnel brace and install that onto the small washer on the bolt. Next, we install the rubber washer with the pimple facing up. And do that for both bolts and insert both bolts into the JXB tunnel brace. 
Once both bolts are installed, we install a rubber washer on each with the pimple facing down, and then the last large remaining washer on top of the rubber washer. Next, we're going to take the bottom half of the carrier, making sure it's detached from the top, and insert the bolts into the carrier. JXB recommends Loctite blue or red on all bolts. I used blue so that it holds, but still gives me the flexibility to change parts in the future. The shoulder bolts prevent the rubber bushings from becoming squashed, so there should be no way to overcompress the damper bushings while torquing the bolts. The torque for the bolts that hold the carrier to the tunnel brace is 19 Newton meters or 14 foot pounds. Install onto drive shaft. For aligning everything, the rounded part of the tunnel brace goes towards the back of the vehicle. You might want to take a look and mentally orient where the holes for connecting the two halves are. With the white text facing forward, insert the rubber paddings into the two halves of the carrier and install the top half over the drive shaft. Then get the bottom half aligned. Apply your Loctite, then use an Allen key to tighten the two halves together. I said this earlier, but just to make absolute sure, the rounded part goes towards the back and the flat part of the tunnel brace goes towards the front. Make any final adjustments as you tighten so that the two halves connect evenly. To validate you've done things properly, the holes in the tunnel brace should align with the bolt holes on the vehicle. I also double checked that there was enough torque holding the carrier at this point. Install tunnel brace. Reinstall the six 16 mm bolts. I installed them all without Loctite to make sure they were in the right position, then individually took them out, applied Loctite, and torqued them down. Results I am impressed with the overall quality of JXB, from the packaging to the part. I'm really happy I upgraded mine and realize now that my carrier bearing support was failing for a long time. I had never checked because I thought the issue was limited to V8s and I was very wrong. I recommend checking out yours and trying to shake the drive shaft from below to see if your carrier bearing support is halfway on its way to bearing support Valhalla. I hope this video helped and I appreciate you tuning in. If this has helped, consider liking the video and subscribing. Thanks for watching.